Well, it's a new day, it's a new Kirk, and it's uh, the same old Buster. One thing I've wondered uh, ever since I started running the water methanol through the engine is like, is it cleaning things inside the combustion chambers? So, I mean, it's got to be, right? Uh, that's one of the benefits of using it, especially on a strictly DI engine with uh, no port injection, so it should be keeping everything nice and clean. But uh, I thought I'd pop a spark plug out and see how it looks. Normally, the spark plug's gonna not be super coated up with deposits, but there is always black carbon around the base of the spark plug. So let's see if that uh, see if that carbon's still there. Really curious. Oh, look at that. Here, let me switch to my phone so you can get a better look. Yeah, check that out. Look how the backside of the spark plug is all clean. Oh, focus, there we go. You can see some of the carbon getting eaten away there. Wow. Notice how the insulator looks. That's a lot better looking. It used to be like really white because, you know, it was running on the leaner side and now it's looking nice and healthy. That's a good looking spark plug. Also, all the junk in the threads just handy sees. Don't worry about that. Yeah, it ain't looking too bad now, is it? Unfortunately, this is still cylinder one, and unfortunately, the coil pack is a piece of crap. Yes, I have coils ordered. No, they have not shipped. So I don't know when that's gonna be, but I guess it's gonna be when it's gonna be. Yeah, because this guy, this guy's got problems. Lots of problems. Ain't helping no one. So sooner or later, we'll have a nice fresh set of coils in here extremely high output three times as powerful as these so that should be interesting and I'll tell you I have not gotten a break with this rain it wasn't even supposed to be raining this much and here it is it's, it's supposed to stop at like I don't know round three baby two eat my whole day up ruining everything I can't even cut my damn grass I know it it's Florida and it rains. It's been like unusually dry. Instead of having like the normal passing shower each day, now we just get like constant thunderstorms and rain half the day for like five days straight. We need it rain, just not all at once, Florida. What are you doing? Grass is looking good though. <laughs> just needs cut. But sadly, because it's been raining, I can't really film the content that I want to film with Buster. Hopefully here in a little bit it will uh, clear up and I can do some of that. Um, but it still shouldn't stop me from doing some of the other things with Buster I wanted to do in this video. So I think I've kind of almost used up my whole tank of water meth. Um, I know I'm getting low. And in order for me to make another tank's worth of uh, the stuff, I need to spend about $16 worth of heat and about three bucks worth of uh, distilled water so I can mix it all together. And with that much heat and water, it's like, you know, above a 50-50, maybe a 60-40 something, I don't know. It's up there, it's above a 50-50 mix. And it's what I've had in the car because I just want the extra octane over the cooling of with the water. So I'm like, well, methanol is like 100 and something octane, you know, it's over 100, 107, 108, 10, whatever, I don't know, it's up there. I imagine maybe when you use water, it cuts that down or dilutes it. I don't know how that works with the chemistry of it. Maybe it doesn't do anything. So I'm like, okay, well, I have at least 100 octanes worth of fuel in the trunk to aid everything else. And right now I'm paying roughly 10 to $20 a gallon for this stuff. Of course, I can go and get pure methanol for about 10 bucks a gallon, you know, 50 bucks for a five gallon pail of it and then cut that down with some water, it ends up being cheaper that way for sure. That's still way too much money for me. I'm cheap, you know that. You know, Buster's only an EcoBoost, not like a GT500 and don't need no bougie ass fuel. I need to go get myself something that's far cheaper per gallon uh, than methanol that's over 100 octane it's readily available. So, hmm, wonder where I could get something like that. 
Ah, yes, $2.99. Yeah, that's a whole lot cheaper per gallon. Of course I'm gonna put E85 in my water methanol system. Why wouldn't I? This totally seems like the logical thing to do, right? I mean, fuel is fuel. So in my calculations, this should work just fine. I can't possibly imagine what could go wrong. Oh. E85. Uh-huh. And uh, let's get it down in there like that. Oh yeah. There we go. Look at that, only two bucks. The topper uh, tank off here with some 100 octane-ish, 100-ish octane fuel. That actually, I think the ethanol content's down a little bit because um, it smells more gasoline-y. Have you ever smelled E85 enough? The higher the ethanol blend, the more sweet smelling it is. And it, this didn't smell that sweet. I usually don't even go to this racetrack either. And their freaking E85 is more expensive than the one right down the street that I go to. This one isn't known to have decent E85 yet. Here I am just to save myself a few more minutes of driving, but what you gonna do? So, that was fun. Now what? Not like a <laughs> all of that thinking, hey, the rain's gonna be done by now. We can have some fun. It's still raining. Kirk isn't trying to put the Mustang into another tree. Been there, done that, do not recommend. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to wait until the rain passes, and then we have some fun. Hopefully that shouldn't be too long. One eternity later. Well, unfortunately, it's uh, still monsooning out here. This is unbelievable. But I can't let the rain stop me. So I just gotta pivot a little bit and change kind of what I'm doing in the video. So that's fine. It was either gonna be in this video or the next one. So, hey, you know. I have the laptop with me because I was doing some data logging. Uh, well, one thing I'm working on slowly is I wanna get this car to launch as best as possible on the street with street tires. So dialing in a launch is a whole process within itself. And in order to get this car to get off the line quickly, you gotta build some boost. Well, the stock converter is a little on the tight side. It isn't too bad, I I've seen worse. It's not a super high stall converter, but if you launch in second gear, second gear allows you to load the engine up to about 3,000, I think it was a little over 3,000 is when it starts spinning the tires in second gear. Last time I did this. So about 3,000 RPMs, the torque converter will slip enough to allow you to build boost in second gear for launching. Not a whole lot of boost, but better than just hitting the gas from a stop, right? So I wanna see how much boost this setup makes on a second gear boost launch. The old setup, if I remember correctly, was somewhere around 7 PSI in second gear. So I, I have a feeling this setup's gonna be a bit lazier with how everything is. But before I do anything, I need to see exactly where the current slip is. So I'm just gonna turn that off, turn that off in drag mode, because this is what I would be launching in anyway and we'll get data log in here. I'm gonna log boost. I wanna see how much boost it builds, but I also wanna log uh, torque converter slip. So this is my desired slip, my actual slip, and I wanna see what it does. So I ain't actually launching the car, but try to build up some boost here. So we got second gear, cool. Let's just start building up our RPM here. <laughs> it started breaking the tires loose before 3,000, I'm guessing, because the the, uh, the ground's wet. That's good enough, I guess. Let's put it back in park and just shut it off for the meantime. Let's check our log and see, see where we're at. This is the, you know, it's slipping at the actual RPM of the car. You can see it was about a 29 hundo. Yeah, 29 hundo. So it was right before 3,000. 
on dry pavement, it will go over 3,000. So not as much as normal, but it's up there. But how much boost did it build? Cause that's, that's more or less what I want to know. Are you serious? Seven, hold on. It goes eight, eight point two. Wow. Wow, Buster. Not bad, bud. 8.2 PSI under 3000. Dang. That's actually more somehow. I don't I don't understand how, but it is. So that's pretty cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flash this tune where I've adjusted and I ain't I don't have a freaking clue what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just gonna make some changes and see if the changes did what I thought they should do. So I am adjusting the torque converter slip for second gear. I'm setting the desired slip higher in hopes that maybe that will give me a few more RPM, loosen it up. I don't know if it will or not. I really don't. So this is the only way I'm going to find out. So I'm going to flash this to the car real quick, and I guess we'll go ahead and see if it worked. Or I'll see if I send the planetary through the side of the transmission. <laughs> One of two things are about to happen. <laughs> All right, we're going to find out. Load her up, see what happens. I may have got a little bit more, a little bit past where I was before. I don't think it was where I wanted it to be. I don't think that did what I thought it should do. Let's look, uh, was it like 2,900 last time? Uh, oh, it did, it did go more. Whoa, look at that. So we were 3,000, even if the desired stayed the same according to this, I mean, it went higher. I don't know if that was due to my changes or, or what, but yeah, it went almost 100 RPM more. Let's see if I built any more boost. Oh, whoa, there we go. Look at that, 10, 11, 12 PSI. Oh, we're on the something. We're on the something. Oh boy, wow, okay. I mean, that's a lot of boosts off the line. Like that, that will freaking shred the tires. So of course then there's gonna be the fun of actually testing out this launch. That's uh, gonna be tough to do. Oh, it doesn't mean I can't possibly try, right? It's probably not the smartest thing I've done all day. <laughs> that actually didn't go as bad as I thought. Buster's gonna have a pretty good launch, hopefully, when I get it all figured out. It's gonna take some tuning and perhaps some other things to be done to the car to to get to where I'm thinking it should be. But I basically want to make my own like launch system because Ford never put it in the automatics and I'm sure there's a way to do it within the tune. I just don't know how. So I'm gonna do it the only way I know how. <laughs> so I'm gonna make my own um, launch control system, I guess. That should be fun. the pops and bangs and stuff but it's kind of fun only does it when I have the aux fuel on so I'm gonna have to get another video of that because I feel like after running it long and hard enough I feel like it starts shooting fireballs out the back it's uh it gets pretty gnarly some of the backfires I would love to capture that on video that'd be kind of entertaining but that's for a whole nother video and a whole nother day which isn't today and I think that's going to wrap it up here for my shenanigans for this video. And yeah, till the next video, you know what to do. Give it a like, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And keep a lookout for next Cars Created video.